we know from research that the way parents uh, uh, support their, their children depends strongly on their social uh, background. Parents coming from disadvantaged social backgrounds often um, have the feeling that they can't support uh, the children sufficiently. They are often um, afraid of getting uh, in touch with the, with the teachers. Um, but um, what should be taken into account is because these parents are often labeled as hard to reach parents. Um, that is not true. Um, and uh, I think what is really important um, when we are talking about um, parents from low SES backgrounds or migration backgrounds, that they all had their own, made their own experiences uh, in school. And this label, hard to reach, is a very individual sense of perspective, and it doesn't take into account uh, structural barriers because schools are very oriented towards a middle class habitus. Um, um, the way uh, the middle class uh, speakers is, is reflected uh, by the teachers. So um, I think what is very important when getting into touch with parents who are labeled as hard to reach is, uh, is the language. You should uh, adopt your own language to the language of the parents. That's, that's very important. Uh, we know from, from research that parents are uh, regardless of their income, education uh, level, they are all involved in the education of their children, but uh, the way how they can support their children depends on their uh, economic, cultural, and social capital. So I think this is very important uh, to, to keep in mind when uh, uh, talking about uh, parents from low SES backgrounds. The improvement should be uh, from sending information and waiting for the parents to react on it uh, to communication. Uh, when we do have our own messages, we listen to each other and uh, we react on each other's messages. Um, and well, of course, it's a, it's a kind of uh, cultural shift because uh, it also needs a reassessment of the role of uh, the teacher in the communication process. So first of all, the improvement is in that, in really setting up communication, which is a two-way thing and not a one-way thing. And of course, uh, ticking off the boxes that the parents saw it and signed it is not real feedback in the communication loop. Um, very often, uh, there is a problem of language. And I don't I'm not, I'm not talking about having different uh, linguas, but it's having different vocabularies. Uh, it is especially a big problem if the parents are low socioeconomic status or if they are very high. Uh, when, with very high socioeconomic status, there is also this kind of uh, bad feelings on the side of the, of the teacher that they are kind of inferior to them. Uh, and that's an area that we usually neglect when we talk about uh, parental engagement because we rather focus on how to communicate with low income or low socioeconomic status parents. But in my experience, very high uh, SES parents, very high socioeconomic status parents are just as difficult to communicate with, uh, especially because many of them are those know-it-all type of uh, approach people. Um, when you have communication issues with low socioeconomic status parents, um, you very often forget that they have a huge backpack of ba bad experiences with teachers. So their communication status or their initial um, kind of at attitude towards communicating with you as a teacher is communicating with an enemy. Uh, because they did have their own bad experiences in their own schooling and those problems can only be overcome if you show them that this is not that kind of frightening situation, that, you, that their children will not suffer but they will benefit from being in your school or in your class. Uh, for these problems, uh, usually uh, there are two good types of solutions. One is to go out of the school and meet the parents somewhere else where they feel comfortable, because they definitely will not feel comfortable coming into the school. Or you can also create different circumstances in a school 
I was in an Irish school once where they had mostly unemployed parents around and uh, the head teacher decided to transform the parent teacher meeting room into a music room and they invited all the parents from the neighborhood to come in and play music and the teachers were highly encouraged to, to spend their free periods in the music room and to casually start engaging with the parents. But we were doing the same, for example, with Roma parents, uh, where we didn't have parent-teachers meetings, but we had handicrafts afternoons, where the teachers did have an agenda, but the parents were not aware of that. And the trust was built, because that's the key. That first of all, we, you have to build the trust if you really want to have good communication. And this is also true for high socioeconomic status parents, because it's sometimes just this feeling of inferiority from the teacher's side, but very often also a feeling of superiority on the, t on the parent's side. And there you also need to build trust. And you also need to, uh, as a professional, sometimes convince the parents that you are valuable and what you are doing is valuable. And also that you should work together for the benefit of the child. Um, another uh, solution that has worked, um, especially when establishing communication, when, when establishing a good uh, and open type of conversation with parents who are difficult, is to find an intermediary. With low socioeconomic status parents, uh, very often because they have this vocabulary problem, they simply don't understand what you talk about as a teacher. But uh, they can be supported by somebody they trust, who is not from the school, or another parent that they already trust and who can probably help them, help in a way translating from English to English, but from educational English to their own everyday English. Um, these are two tried and tested things, but for the second one, you need to find the right intermediary. Because just inviting the social worker in will, uh, in many cases, just, be, just make things worse.